Yesterday, January 19th, C-band 5G launched on Verizon and AT&T, giving these carriers true, real, next-generation worthy 5G networks. Meanwhile, T-Mobile stayed one step ahead by turning on 5G carrier aggregation. So what's the latest? We got the news. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a big update on 5G. In fact, we've been kind of calling January 19th as 5G Day because well, this is the much delayed launch of C-band spectrum on Verizon and AT&T. This is the mid-band spectrum that is really kind of the first next generation worthy, not super short range 5G technologies rolling out to these big two carriers. So, so what is C-band and why does it matter? Well, this is a chunk of spectrum, fairly high frequency spectrum that the FCC auctioned off in early 2021 and the carriers spent a fortune on this. All told, the acquisition cost for C-band spectrum was pushed up over $90 billion, and Verizon in particular spent over $53 billion to acquire the spectrum from the FCC and to pay the incumbent users to move off of it early. So this is a huge, huge investment, the biggest investment ever made in cellular. And well, the reason this was so important is this mid-band spectrum is considered kind of the Goldilocks spectrum between, you know, we've talked about the 5G layer cake in the past. You've got super short range millimeter wave that is really crazy fast. You've got long range low band, which is basically 4G spectrum being repurposed for 5G, but it doesn't really perform all that much better than really good 4G. But then mid-band, the spectrum in the middle of the cake is gives you kind of the best of both worlds. It gives you a lot of really truly next generation speed and capacity, but it does give you a decent amount of range that you can you know get a mile or two from the cell tower. It's not long, long range like the low band spectrum, but it is enough to actually cover a town and you know to spread out into a more usable area. So this is a, the Goldilocks spectrum, and up until now in the United States, there really hasn't been any of that spectrum available other than the mid-band spectrum that T-Mobile got by acquiring Sprint. That was the main reason to buy Sprint. It wasn't for the customers. It was because Sprint had, you know, mostly sitting unused, a whole bunch of mid-band spectrum band N41 that is perfect for 5G. And that's what's given T-Mobile a big head start. Verizon and AT&T, they're playing catch-up, and that's why they're paying through the nose to race out as quickly as they can to get C-band. Now, C-Band was supposed to launch in December 2021, so oh, six uh, weeks ago. And, well, at the last minute, the FAA said there might be some problems with some radar altimeters, and carriers agreed to a four-week delay, then a two-week delay, and they finally worked out terms with the FAA. The FAA agreed that no further delays would be pushed, but there's some, you know, fiddling around of like how close the C-band towers can be to airports and giving the FAA a little bit more time to get all these older radar altimeters certified. So all those delays are out of the way. They finally flipped the switch on January 19th and boom, we've got C-band, AT&T and Verizon have a huge network improvement. Um, so what, what's changed? So first, starting with Verizon, this is, this is Verizon's big push. This is Verizon's big foundation for their next generation 5G network. And they've been working on this ever since they bought the Spectrum um, last year and have been ready to go. And they're saying that they're, by the end of January, they will have flipped on C-band service covering uh, 100 million people. So that's a big initial rollout for C-band. That's a lot of people. And they're saying you'll see at least 10x better performance than 4G LTE or you know, mostly like Verizon's longer range 5G nationwide network has also been really kind of a subpar performer, more like 4G LTE. So this is a lot of faster performance for a lot of people over a big chunk of the country. Now, just where? Well, um, Verizon has said 1,300 cities and towns have had C-band turned on. But, well, because of the very last minute changes they had to do with the, uh, um, you know, C-band near airports and making some final adjustments to please the FAA, they did not reveal their maps today. So people on social media have been sharing, hey, I'm seeing a 5G UW up in the corner of my phone. I'm getting suddenly much faster speeds on Verizon, but Verizon hasn't updated their maps yet. They have put out our map updates are coming soon. They have no official list of where this is. So we'll know soon once Verizon updates their maps just where it is. But if you've got a 
device that is showing 5G UW, you might potentially start seeing it in places you've never seen it before and you be connecting to this C-band spectrum. Now, now on to AT&T. Now AT&T has also turned on C-band and today they published the map and we didn't, nobody knew exactly what kind of launch uh, AT&T was going to do. They knew it was going to be smaller than Verizon's, but um, just how much smaller I think is a bit of a surprise. AT&T is only turning on C-band in eight metro areas. So a pretty small list of cities getting C-band turned on by AT&T. Now C-band is a lower priority for AT&T. A lot of the C-band spectrum that they purchased is actually not usable until uh, 2023. So it seems like they're going to be taking their time and haven't rushed into it nearly as quickly as Verizon. So this leaves AT&T kind of you know, setting themselves up to be in a third place in the 5G technology race. So if you're an AT&T customer, it's probably not nearly as important to consider the potential for upgrading. Now, not to be outdone by you know all this C-band news from uh, AT&T and Verizon, you know, T-Mobile, you know, they didn't need C-band. They because they, they have all that spectrum that they got from Sprint, but they kind of wanted to you know rub it into the other carriers just to point out, well, hey, we've got a head start and we are continuing to build on that head start. So T-Mobile announced that they are actually turning on 5G carrier aggregation. Now this is a feature we're very familiar with in the 4G world where you, know, you combine multiple bands together to get more speeds and more capacity. That same basic concept exists in the 5G universe as well. And uh, T-Mobile is being the first carrier in the United States to actually implement turning on 5G carrier aggregation. So, you know, as of today, they're pushing out software updates to enable combining two channels of 2.5 gigahertz, so two different N41 channels together to get more speed and more capacity. They're saying about 20% more speed and, um, you know, doubling of the amount of people who are seeing over 100 megabit per second in speed tests in these 5G ultra capacity areas. But more interesting for nomads and those of us who like to go you know, into more remote areas, T-Mobile is also pushing out software updates um, for the iPhone 13 and the Samsung Galaxy S21 that enable 5G carrier aggregation across the mid-band spectrum and the low-band spectrum. So you kind of get the best of both worlds of you get the range of the low band spectrum. This is T-Mobile 600 megahertz band N71. And then you get the, the raw speed of the mid band. That's the, their band N41, the, the spectrum that they got from Sprint. By combining the two simultaneously, you get the, you basically your device, your phone will do the uplink on the low band, which is better able to be heard over a longer distance from the tiny radio transmitting in your phone. And then the downlink can go over the higher frequency N41, which you would not be able to communicate two ways over that kind of high frequency, but the big tower broadcasting to your phone can still get through. So this has the potential to give that sort of N41, that mid-band performance over a wider range. So this is pretty exciting technology. The catch with this is that sort of a mid-band and low-band carrier aggregation requires the absolute latest in 5G modem chipsets, the Qualcomm X60. So basically that's why it's only going out for the iPhone 13 and the Samsung Galaxy S21. A few other phones with um, X60 equivalent modems will be getting updated to support that as well. Um, but for the most part, this is, you know, devices that come out in 2022 will have that caliber of technology. So well, yet again, one more reason to have, you know, wanted to wait on investing in 5G is because these next generation modems will be able to get, you know, do more carry aggregation combinations and take advantage of 5G over longer range. Now, speaking of devices and device compatibility, now what devices are supported by Verizon? Initially, they're just turning it on for the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13, 5G iPads, the Galaxy S21, the Samsung Flip 3, and Fold 3. Those are the only devices that have had C-Band turned on today. There will be a whole bunch of other devices, and we've got a link to a Verizon's compatibility checker where they show what other devices will be getting C-Band turned on with software updates in the uh, weeks and months ahead. Um, but there are also a lot of earlier devices, you know, particularly 5G devices made in 2020 and um, most in 2021 will get C-band, but some, a lot of what was made in 2020 will not get upgrades. So keep that in mind. If you've got older 5G stuff, that was a reason not to be an early adopter because, well, you're missing out on 
Verizon's true real 5G network. Now, what about mobile hotspots? Will they be C-band compatible? Will 5G mobile hotspots be C-band compatible? For example, we've got the um, Insego M2100. This was Verizon's flagship 5G jetpack that they've been selling for a while now. And unfortunately, we've now gotten confirmation from Verizon that this will not get a software update to enable C-band compatibility. So we kind of warned about this from the day this came out, that we noticed that it was not FCC certified for band N77, and we told people that you might not want to invest in this hotspot, knowing that it might not have, when C-band finally launched, it might not have much of a future. And indeed, that is proving to be true. This is not going to be C-band compatible. Um, AT&T says that they have 17 C-band compatible devices for sale right now. If you go onto their uh, website, you can dive down into the specs and look for N77 is really the only way they're calling it out. Um, and over time, that will grow to be a lot more. And you know, potentially some older AT&T devices might be getting software updates in the future. But again, the C-band is less of an emphasis, less of a push on AT&T. On AT&T, the Netgear Nighthawk 5G, this also you know, did not ship with N77 certification. Um, there is some potential, we have not been able to confirm that AT&T might do a software update to enable um, C-band on this, but I would not count on that. It you know may or may not happen. Um, so definitely don't count on C-band with this either. On both of these carriers going forward, now they'll certainly be refreshing their product lines to have mobile data devices that support C-band. Um, so we're already tracking a few things that are in FCC certification phase that will likely come out on Verizon, on AT&T. So if you are interested in mobile hotspots on these carriers and you want 5G compatibility and you want some future proofing, might want to wait until all the dust settles and they roll out what their plans are going forward. You know, people are always wondering about well, what about uh, cellular routers and what about um, other things like that? You know, are they going to be able to take advantage of C-band and N77 and 5G carrier aggregation and all this stuff? And the good news is like devices like the Pepwave uh, Max Transit BR1 Pro 5G that we're actually using to uh, record and upload this video on, those have the technical support for band N77, the um, 5G mid-band C-band spectrum. Um, so we're hoping that they will work on Verizon and AT&T's network. Peplink tells us that there's no technical reason they shouldn't, but also the carriers haven't certified them yet. So there might be some hoops to go through before the networks will recognize them. We'll be looking closely for first-hand reports to see just if there are any compatibility glitches with routers talking to um, you know these new C-band networks. But the one thing these routers will not be able to do is well they're using the Qualcomm so far all cellular routers are using the Qualcomm X55 modem chipset which does not support mid-band and low-band carrier aggregation so that is definitely a concern um, for future proofing uh, these will probably perform really great on the C-band networks once they you know as the networks roll out and as the software and the routers get updated but no amount of software updates can enable that hardware feature um, which you know, will matter more and more into the future. So, so to wrap up, this is actually a really big day for um, 5G technology. This is when um, 5G in some sense really gets real and practical over a longer range um, and is starting to deliver really next generation capabilities for um, Verizon and well, it's gonna be a slow roll for AT&T. Um, so, you know, 5G is starting to finally get interesting as we head into 2022. But again, this is still a slow evolutionary process. It's going to take time for all this technology to spread out to a wider range, um, to particularly spread out into providing the longer range rural coverage that is often of most interest to RVers and cruisers. So don't feel like you need to drop everything, rush out and upgrade right now. But if you are in the market for new technology, whether it's a phone, mobile hotspot, a router, keeping aware of this and you know, looking to invest in N77 compatibility or looking for gear that will support the next generation care aggregation, it's time to start paying attention to that stuff because over the lifetime of these devices, this will matter and this will pay off in the long run. 5G is starting to get interesting. It's going to be going from really good 4G to really interesting, much faster performance, next generation technology. And 
well, I, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, four G is fast enough. Why do I, why do I care about faster? Why do I care about getting a gigabit per second download or anything like that? The important thing to remember is when a network is capable of those kind of super fast speeds, we might not necessarily need those speeds, but that also means the network is capable of that much more capacity, which means more people able to stay connected at the same time doing their slower speed tasks without running into congestion, without running into issues where the, you know, the network is falling down underneath them. So that is the exciting thing about 5G. It's not about the speeds. It's about more capacity for all of us to do the things that enable our sorts of mobile lifestyles to be pop to be possible. So we're excited about 5G. We're looking forward to finding places where um, C-band has been turned on and getting some hands-on time with some of the gear that we have and seeing just how well this uh, new network actually plays out in the real world. So stay tuned and uh, um, keep connected. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.